All animals have this problem of historical legacies, which means that they're not perfectly designed machines. But are humans particularly um, unfortunate with respect to our historical legacy, do you think? Well, you know, our environment is not just a new one that we've moved into one, it's one that we've constructed. And I think one of the saddest ironies about modern human life is that we now have created for ourselves environments that even the kings of England a few centuries ago couldn't have dreamed of. Hot and cold running water, all the delicious food we want to eat, uh, light so we can read all night if we want to and listen to music at high volumes. I mean, it's a fabulous life we've constructed for ourselves. It really satisfies those needs that natural selection shaped in us. On the other side of it, though, those needs are killing us because what we want is fatty foods and sugary foods and sedentary lives. It was very useful back in Africa, um, but now those habits, which are products of natural selection shaping our motivational systems, they're killing us. And they're, you go to your doctor and say, doctor, what should I do to be healthy? Your doctor says, exercise a lot and basically eat a lot of foods that don't taste that good. Mm -hmm. And sadly, um, we were designed to pursue the foods that were in short supply in Africa. And now that we can get lots of them, they're really bad for us. Right. Also, if we go back a bit further in history, uh, we, we walked on all fours. And, and mm -hmm. I mean, that's a pretty dramatic change, you know, to walk on two legs instead of four. You, I, you'd expect that that would have ramifications. It certainly does. You know, in children especially, but sometimes in adults, our bowels get tangled up with each other. And they essentially tie themselves in knots. You'd think that you know, natural selection would have fixed that. And if we look over here at a um, skeleton of a donkey, you can see how the backbone is here in a nice arch, first of all. And you can also see the cavity where the intestines are in there. They hang all of the intestines from a blade of tissue that goes right down the middle so that they don't get tangled up. If you take this donkey and turn it on its hind legs, like this, all of a sudden, all of the intestines which were hanging very nicely hanging here. Hanging from the backbone, yeah. Hang, they're yeah. all of a sudden yes. draping in a big tangled mess, like a pile of tangled fishing line. Again, the amazing thing is they don't get tangled up more than they do. Yeah. And of course, the other problem just about everybody has in their life at some time or another is back pain. I mean, it's just, you know, why didn't natural selection fix that one? And again, we can. this is a great example of what you were just saying, Richard, about, you know, Natural selection can't start fresh, and we have legacies from our new way of life standing up. Notice here with the donkey, it has a nice arched curved backbone, just like a bridge, a very nice way of supporting everything. If you look at the chimpanzee here, you see that there's still mostly that bridge with the beginnings of a little spot here where the back turns out. In fully upright humans, you see that the back, you have a nice curve here, and then you have a certain, sudden sharp bend. And that's so that we can stand upright. A marvelous thing that we can do. I'm not sure why we stand upright. It's that's a separate a good, question. Yeah. A good question. Um, but I do know that this bend of the backbone is something that causes terrible problems for many people. Uh, that's the evolutionary explanation for back pain. There's the physical explanation, the mechanical explanation, is bones pinching nerves. Um, but that's the mechanical explanation. The questions we want to answer yeah. are why did natural selection... That, that's a very it, good illustration because doctors would, will always tell you what the problem is. Your, bone, your bones are pinching your nerves. Right. But what you're asking is, well, why is that happening? What's the, what's the historical reason exactly. for that? Th those of us who are trying to advance evolutionary applications in medicine would like to see every medical textbook for every disease have one more paragraph. Instead of just an explanation for how the body works and how it breaks, we want one more paragraph about why natural selection has left it vulnerable to breaking. Yeah. And we've gone into some of the reasons for that already. Yes. And what about cancer? That's a special problem, isn't it? No, oh, it's a terrible problem yeah. because it gets worse and worse as you get older, of course. Mm -hmm. um, it too turns out to be a trade-off, though. We can't regrow all of our tissues. We can regrow some of them, but not all of them. Our skin, if you cut it, it heals. Or your liver, even. If you lose some of it, it'll regrow. Your heart? No. Your brain? No. So why can't we regrow heart and regrow brain? 
And the reason for that is that in ancestral times, people who injure their heart or their brains had no chance of surviving. So there was no selection benefit from being able to repair those kinds of tissues. But you asked about cancer. Uh, it's so hard to talk about cancer. The cells divide, and there are very fancy mechanisms that natural selection is shaped to keep their division under control. In fact, one can look at the whole process of development in the body as largely one that specializes cells so they divide just the right amount and then stop. And then stop, yeah. One of the mechanisms that keeps cells from dividing out of control looks like it's something called telomeres. Now, on the end of each chromosome, the chromosomes are the little bits of DNA that are all strung together. At the end of each chromosome, there's a bit of DNA hanging off the end. And every single time that the cell divides, a little bit of that DNA gets clipped off. And the next time it divides, a little bit more gets clipped off. And basically, it's just the unraveling of the rope at the end, and there needs to be a little spare at the end. But it's also a wonderful safety mechanism, because if this line of cells starts dividing out of control, then snip, 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 and then the cell dies. Because once that telomere, that little bit, bit of extra DNA hanging off the end is gone, the cell is going to die. A marvelous safety device. But it has a cost too, doesn't it? Because then as you get older and the cells divide, um, at a certain point you will have used up all of that telomere and you will have cells dying because of that. And in a recent study, it was found that people who had longer telomeres indeed were living longer lives. The next part of the story is to show that they are at a greater risk of cancer. And so here we see in a very dramatic form the trade-offs uh, between advantages and disadvantages.